Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about acute tubular necrosis or ATN. So acute tubular necrosis is an abrupt and sustained decline in glomerular filtration rate within minutes to days after ischemic or nef nephrotoxic insult. And that's what's um, the key in acute tubular necrosis. It is an ischemic or nephrotoxic insult. It leads to an abrupt rise in urea and creatinine after again, an ischemic or nephrotoxic insult, and those can be more subdivided into hypotensive episodes, sepsis, rhabdomyolysis, or an administration of a nephrotoxic drug. And ATN has specific risk factors. Some of them include a pre-existing chronic kidney disease, cardiovascular disease, uh, extracellular fluid volume depletion, and multiple renal insults can all uh, predispose an individual to having an ATN. And acute tubular necrosis has specific complications. It can lead to hyperkalemia, metabolic acidosis, decreased calcium, increased phosphate, and hypoalbuminemia. Now, the pathophysiology of acute tubular necrosis is in its name. It involves the renal tubules. It involves tubular injury due to ischemic or toxic insult. It essentially at the beginning will lead to focal loss of tubular epithelial cells. And later on it will go through a recovery phase and we'll, we can see a regeneration of tubular cells. And all of this leads to urine that has high uh, fractional excretion of sodium and it leads to uh, the excretion of pigmented granular casts or muddy brown casts in an ATN. That is um, how we can distinguish ATN from acute interstitial uh, nephritis or uh, glomerular nephritis by these muddy brown casts. So again ATN involves ischemic toxic injury to the renal tubule itself as opposed to glomerular nephritis which has damage in the glomerular uh, in the glomerulus or the um, acute interstitial nephritis which involves the interstitium of the kidney. Now the causes of acute tubular necrosis are those two categories we talked about before nephrotoxins and ischemic injury. So with regards to toxins, we have to break it down into exogenous and endogenous categories. In exogenous toxins that can cause ATN include antibiotics, so antibiotics such as aminoglycosides, cephalosporins, and amphotericin B can all cause a toxic injury. They can all be nephrotoxins. Antiviral treatments can also lead to um, a injury to renal tubules. It's also antineoplastics like cisplatin can cause ATN as well. Methotrexate is another antineoplastic that can cause ATN as well. Contrast media, so IV contrast for radiographic imaging can lead to damage to the renal tubules. This leads to contrast-induced nephropathy can also cause vasoconstriction. So in, in a, uh, essence, it can cause a nephrotoxic injury and an ischemic injury due to um, vasoconstriction. There are heavy metals that can also cause uh, toxic injury to renal tubules. And also ethylene glycol can cause an ATN as well. Now, endogenous causes of ATN include bacterial endotoxins. So if a person has a bacterial infection, those bacteria can release endotoxins and these can lead to damage to the renal tubules. Myoglobin from rhabdomyolysis. So if a person um, gets a severe injury where skeletal muscle is damaged, myoglobin, myoglobin can be released into the bloodstream. It can damage the kidneys. It can damage renal tubules. Hemoglobin as well can cause damage to the renal tubules leading to an ATN. 
Now the second or main category of causes of ATIN is the ischemic injury or ischemia. Most of it has to do with hypotension, so the blood pressure is too low. This leads to decreased blood pressure and blood volume getting to the kidneys, causing ischemia. This can be in the form of shock as well. Oh, other than blood pressure, decreased circulating blood volume can also have the same effect. So anything that causes a decreased circulating volume could lead to ischemia of the renal tubules, such as hemorrhage. Um, you can also have uh, skin losses of fluid, GI losses, renal losses. So anything that's leading to losses of uh, fluid can cause decreased circulating volume and lead to an ischemic injury of renal tubules. And then there's also this other aspect of circulating volume, decreased effective circulating volume. So instead of just having a decreased volume, we have a decreased effective circulating volume. This can do, be due to um, or be due, due to a heart failure, um, could be myocardial infarction, uh, liver failure can also do that as well. So there's third spacing of the fluid. We have the fluid, but it's not being effectively delivered to the kidneys. Sepsis is also another one as well. Anaphylaxis, these also tie in with the shock element. So they can lead to decreases in systemic vascular resistance, effectively leading to decreased effective circulating volume um, to the kidneys. There's also vessel occlusion. So anything that can um, block the delivery of um, blood, uh, blood to the kidneys can also cause an ischemic injury. Again, these are blockages in the renal artery. So renal artery stenosis could be a, a cause of that as well. So once we have an ATN, how do we treat it and how do we prevent it in the future? So for treatment, we have to correct the underlying problem. We have to do investigative work to determine what the underlying problem or underlying cause of the ATN is. So for nephrotoxic injury, we have to identify the nephrotoxic and we have to stop it. So if it's antibiotic use, we have to identify the antibiotic and stop it. If it's um, in, uh, an injury, the patient may have rhabdomyolysis, we have to try to correct the rhabdomyolysis. If it's an issue with um, an infection um, and bacterial endotoxins are causing the injury, we have to try to uh, treat the infection. With ischemia, we want to either improve their blood pressure. So if the blood pressure is too low, we want to improve that. If their fluid deplete, we want, it, we want to replete their fluid. And once we have done those things, it's more of a supportive um, treatment. So we basically support them through the ATN. If the ATN is severe or rapidly progressing, we might want to consider early dialysis. So for prevention, so for prevention, we want to identify high-risk patients. We want to try to avoid using nephrotoxics um, if we can. And if we're going to use IV contrast, if we need to do radiographic imaging, we can give N-acetylcysteine 600 to 1200 BIV day per day uh, before and after radiographic contrast, give them IV fluid. This has been used before to um, reduce the risk of contrast induced nephropathy, although I believe we're beginning to move away from the use of N-acetylcysteine. And we also want to avoid diuretic use, ACE inhibitor use, and cyclosporin use before a procedure as well. So before an IV contrast procedure, we want to avoid diuretic use, ACE inhibitor use, and cyclosporin use as well. So anyways, guys, that was a lesson on acute tubular necrosis. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.